everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for Simon Says Stamp with 10 ways to watercolor. I thought I'd show you some of the watercolors that I have. And to start things off, I'm showing you the palette or cake type paints. I have stamped and white embossed several flowers and also used the matching die cut. And I'll be using these little flowers as the example as I work through some of the 10 ways to color. So I'm starting off with the Koi watercolor palette and the first thing I want to do is to get some water and add it to my flower. I am speeding these up a little bit so I can fit everything in within my 15 minute maximum. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that my brush is really wet. I'm going to swirl it around onto that color and I can use the little palette that's above and mix in more water to lighten it up. But what I'll do is I'll just run over the little valleys from that white embossing and start coloring in my flower. I really like this Koi brand because it has that built-in palette in the lid and you can mix colors if you want as you work away and also it includes a little water brush. So this palette of colors I can get just a whole range of other colors and if you notice there's also white in the upper left which is really good to mute down your colors. Another type of paint are the Twinkling H2O's. I wanted to go over this and kind of show you how they work. So they are a solid when you start off and they work best if you get them wet first. So what I like to do is to squirt the entire top with water and then just let that set and soften. Once that softened up a bit and I still have quite a bit of water in there so I'm not going to wet my paper down first. I'm not going to really worry about it but I can start painting and if I feel I have too much paint on my brush I can go ahead and grab some more water and kind of lighten that up. These are really great and the reason why you want to soften them is because of the mica pigment that's in there so these are really nice and glittery when you're all done. Uh, painting is the same. You're just going to run your brush around in the little valleys that I have of my flower that's from the white embossing. I like to go back into the center and add a little bit more concentrated color. With any watercoloring, it's also really nice to kind of let it dry or rest and then go back in and add more definition of color. Another product that you can use for watercoloring are gelatos from Faber Castell. These are really cool. They're in a creamy form and they're like a lipstick so you can go ahead and twist the cap and get your color out. You can use these in a couple different ways. Right now I'm adding this just directly onto my paper and then I'm mixing with water. You can also create a paste say on a block or some sort of um, watercolor palette and mix it with water, kind of chop it down and mix it with water and then paint with it. Uh, I wanted to try it just directly onto my paper. I get really great concentrated color and as I lighten it up it flows around really nicely just like regular watercolors. You can mix your colors by grabbing some other color from the top of the gelato just by swirling your brush around and here I've picked up some pink and I'll just add this to the center of my flower. Another fun and really unique watercolor are Peerless Transparent Watercolors. These come on a pad of paper and as you flip through, the front side has the paint on it. I'll go ahead and grab this one. The front side has the paint on it and if you flip it over, that's the actual paint color that you'll get. Since the actual paint that I'm using is dry, I want to make sure that I go ahead and add water to my flower using my larger brush to do that. And with my smaller brush, I went ahead and got it wet just a little bit and just wiped it right onto that peerless paper. Uh, this is really highly concentrated color and I have a lot of water on my brush right now and so I'm going to go back in and grab some more color as I need. I really like these because if I were to be painting over black, I don't know if you've ever noticed that some of the palette type watercolors will kind of chalky up your black inks, but this one is really super clear and transparent. So once I get my base color done, I'll go back in and get a little bit more highly concentrated color. If you notice, I didn't wet my brush right away. I went ahead and grabbed as much strong color as I could, and then I can add water and kind of soften that up as I go. The Peerless watercolor booklets come in several varieties. This is just one of them that I like to use most of the time. Another item you can use for watercoloring are watercolor pencils. 
For these pencils, I do like to use my water brush, and I'm going to show you how to fill this up really quick. You're just going to unscrew the cap and get your water ready and squeeze where it says push, submerge that into your water, and start filling up your tube or your reservoir. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and put that cap right back on, and I like to use my finger and give that a little squeeze till I see water coming into that chamber and now I'm ready to roll with it. So I'm going to start off by using my pencils and I'm going to color in my flower here and I am using the Prima pencils. I've chosen a really light turquoise to start off with and as I'm coloring in I want to make sure that I don't get any heavy lines. I want everything to look soft so that it blends really well. Once I have enough color on there I can go ahead and use my water brush and I'm just going to run around and this is just activates that watercolor pencil and it flows just like regular watercolors. To add additional or darker color, I can go ahead and just touch the tip of that pen right onto the pencil. And this is that darker blue. And here I'm just putting this into the center. Now I'm pulling the color out using the water brush. If you need more water to come through your water brush, just give it a little push on the sides and you're ready to go again. You can mix colors together with the technique that I'm using right now where I put my water brush right to the pencil tip or you can color your object initially with several different colors and then blend them together as you go. Another one of my favorite ways to paint is to use the Distress Spray Stains or Dilution Sprays. All of the Distress products are great for using with watercolor because their color stays true when mixed with water. If you wanted to, you could also add color to your water brush. I only have one, but I'll show you really quickly how you'd take that apart. So using a pipette, you would grab some of the water. I'm going to just go ahead and squeeze this onto my block because I'll be using it. You unscrew the lid, and then you take off the little cap from the inside, fill that up with some of your spray, and you can mix that with water for lighter color if you wanted. Because the sprays are really concentrated color, I'm going to go ahead and wet my flower down a little bit first just to get that color moving around. And then I can go back in and add deeper color as needed. If you find that your colors are not flowing as much, you can also go back to a regular paintbrush, which does hold a little bit more water, and go ahead and start painting again. As I said, these are really super concentrated with color, and so to lighten that up, I'm just going to go back in with some water. You can also add water and blot it up, just like some of the regular Distress techniques. Uh, this color is just absolutely gorgeous, and I really love how it flows in those valleys of that flower. Added a little extra water there, and I've just blotted that off, and that just gives me a super cool watercolor look. Now I can add some really great concentrated color to the centers. If you don't have a lot of your stains, you can also use your Distress Cubes or your regular ink pads. So for this technique, I am just going to put my color directly onto an acrylic block. I like to use the block because I can see the color really well. I do want to wet my paper down first with some water, and I'm using my larger brush for this because it goes really fast. So once I get that all covered with a little bit of water, I'm going to go back in with my smaller brush and just start mixing in some of that on the block and I can just start painting as I would a stain or any other type of color. So this flows really nicely and it's really transparent and it looks really nice if you let it dry in between layers of color. If you wanted to mix your colors, I would put another color right next to my first color on the block and then just kind of pull color together on the block and then go ahead and paint into the flower. Another watercolor effect using my cubes is to use a stamp. I have chosen a stamp that's fairly solid but yet definite uh, different shapes with it. So I like to call this my walk and wiggle. So what I'm going to do is start adding my ink to my craft sheet rather than putting it directly onto the stamp. And I'm going to start generating kind of a pattern of color and remembering that the two colors that are going to mix together are going to form another color. So I'm kind of just going in a little area that's kind of offset. I don't want a perfectly covered image. Once I have my inks on my craft sheet, I'm going to go ahead and set my stamp right on top and give it a little bit of a wiggle. I'm going to set that up a little bit and wiggle and then bring it back down 
and wiggle. So what this has done is mix those colors together and it'll help me form new colors. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up so I don't make a huge mess and I'll be using just regular watercolor paper. Also I have a towel just to collect some of the water and I'm using my mini mister about a foot away and what I want is to start seeing bubbles of ink. You don't want this entirely dripping wet but just enough to ball up so that it'll create this watercolor effect. I'm pressing my paper onto the stamp and I'm just kind of going around with my fingers making sure I get all of that done. You do want to make sure your stamp is clear or clean when you first start. So now I have a watercolored background. My final way to color with watercolors is to use markers and my preferred marker is the distress markers. They flow so nicely. So what I like to do is just scribble on my block and then I'm just going to go ahead and wet my flower down once again. Uh, the big tip on when to wet down your paper first is if you're using kind of a dry type of color then you certainly do want to water it down. If you're using a really wet form of watercolors then you really don't need to. But to color this in you're going to just go like regular watercolors and pick up color with that wet brush and just color into those valleys of that flower. It's really easy to mix colors with the markers on the block just by scribbling right next to one another and then you can mix two different colors together. Again, I'm just adding more concentrated color in the centers. Markers are also really handy to color onto a stamp. So here I'm just coloring in some of the Moroccan shapes from my stamp and I've alternated colors and it's really nice because I can keep these all very individual. So I've used some orange, pink, green and then a turquoise blue and I'm trying to decide if I need to add another one. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this and again just like that last technique with the backgrounds I'm going to go ahead and mist this with water about a foot away until I see the ink bubbling up or getting a little wet and again I'm going to go ahead and lay my watercolor paper right on top and just kind of run my fingers over. I don't want to push too hard. I want to have all those colors just really soak into that paper as much as possible. And once I lift that off, I have my watercolor background with more individual color. I'm using a towel to kind of dry up some of the excess water. I've put together a card using some of the flowers that I've colored and the pink one is from the Distress Spray, the yellow one is from the Peerless Transparent Watercolors, and then the blue one is the Prima Watercolor Pencils, along with the background that I created. I hope I've given you some inspiration with 10 ways to watercolor and thanks for watching.